Hallelujah. Amen. I have been going through a process of death. Of death. Hallelujah. Let us turn to our Bible. In the book of John, chapter number 12. What do we struggle with in life? Because I see a lot of us struggling to be somebody. Amen? Amen. We are all striving to be something in the society. True or not true? Have you been a degree for what? To be better, right? Everything, you know. Lorraine, you are looking for a job for what? Me <coughs> too. Mm. But to be better, right? Yeah. You are not comfortable where you are. Yeah. Every single one of us is striving to be better. Amen? Amen. And there are many books everywhere that you will find. People telling you of five steps, seven steps, ten steps of being better. Amen? Amen? And if you follow those steps, you will be better. But we have forgotten and we have failed to look at the manual that has been put out for every Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. For us to be better is right here. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is what I'd like us to look at this morning. And by the mercy of God, He will help us to see a few things and to challenge us also in a few areas of our life. Amen. <clears throat> After the disciples had been with Jesus for so many months, they realized something unique about His life. That everywhere that Jesus went, He did good. Everything that Jesus did succeeded. Everything that Jesus touched was changed. And they looked into the life of Jesus every single day. And they would try and compare their life with Jesus. And realize that there is nothing particularly different about this life. But why is it that whatever Jesus does, stands, is different? changes things. What was unique about Jesus? Hallelujah. One time they are struggling to, uh, to, to, to heal somebody. You remember that story? Mm -hmm. They are they're struggling to heal somebody and then Jesus comes and rebukes the demon out of this guy and he is set free and the young man becomes a normal person like everybody else and they ask Jesus, Jesus, how come we try and fail. But you, in a matter of a few seconds, the demon is left. What is it that we did not do right? Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus tells them, this guy does not live except by what? Prayer and fasting. Every time we aspire to be better, you always have a picture of somebody who has succeeded. True or not true? In our life, even in the area of business, in the area of beauty, in the area of education, in the area of family, you always tend to look for somebody that is, is making it. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so if, 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 if you are in business, and a big business, but multi-millionaire was coming in the city, you would sit down to be taught. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. We have heard and we have seen people come into this, into this country and people pay 50,000. Have you heard of those guys? Yeah. Just to listen. Because that man is making it. So if we can only get something from him, probably we will also make it. And so we strive to get these personalities that we can copy and become like. The only sad bit of it is that very few of us are looking at Jesus. 
who alone is the man that succeeded in every area of his life. Amen? Mm -hmm. So it is wisdom when you get somebody who has succeeded to listen to them. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. If you want to be better, you've got to draw from somebody that has made it. And that is what I see the disciples struggling to learn about Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. They have been trying to fish the whole night. They are professional fishermen. And in the morning, they have caught nothing. And then Jesus comes, and he says, what's up there? He says, no, no, Jesus, we've been trying the whole night to get some fish, and we haven't gotten anything. And Jesus tells them, cast your net on the right side. And Peter says, Master, we have tried all these things. It's, it's not working. He says, please cast your net on the right side. And Peter does it. And when Peter does it, the Bible says that he got a catch at noonday. Mark you, there is no fishing that happens in the day. Fishermen fish at night. Vanessa is you. They don't fish at the day. But Jesus instructs Peter and the other fishermen, and they do exactly that. And when they do it, they actually catch a catch that they cannot even be able to contain in the boat. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. And they begin to wonder, what is it you think about Jesus? Anybody ever ask yourself that question? What made Jesus succeed? So the disciples have been with Jesus for a while. And so they realize that there is something unique about Jesus. We are with him the whole time. But at some time, sometimes in the evening, he goes away. Amen? And after he's done, he comes back and something new is about him. Amen? Sometimes we, 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 we wake up thinking we're going to have breakfast together with Jesus. We realize he's not there. He's gone somewhere in the bush somewhere. Amen? And so with time, the disciples realized that the secret to Jesus' success was in prayer. So because they realized it, they said, even as we pray, even me I pray, but why is it that the prayer of Jesus works but my prayer doesn't work? So they get to Jesus and tell Jesus, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Hallelujah. That is a wise, that is a wise question. And Jesus, being a kind-hearted man, tells them, this is the manner in which we must pray. Let's all go together. Our Father, who art in heaven, I will be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom. The power and the glory. For What is it about your life. That you do so well. That somebody else wants to learn that secret. Jesus gave it to us. Amen. Amen. I want us to look a little bit into the Lord's prayer. Just one specific area. Because if we get this, then the Lord will help us to live a life that is successful. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So again, he says, this is the manner in which you shall pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Uh, you know, I will teach us sometime about that Lord's Prayer and everything about it, but not today. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? Many times when we think about on earth, we think about dunya. Praise be to Jesus. But you are an earthen vessel, aren't you? Amen. So when we are saying thy will be done on earth, you're basically saying the will of God be done in this earthen vessel. This earthen vessel. Let the will of God be done in my life. As it is in heaven. Who is taking time and laboring so that the Lord would reveal what his will is for our life? How sad it's going to be when we stand before God one day 
and we realize everything we did on earth for 35 years, for 50 years, for 70 years was not what he had called us to do. And then we come boasting and saying, Lord, I've lived a good life. He says, did you leave the way I had planned? This is what I have planned for you. This is what you live. Which heaven are you coming to? Praise be to Jesus. And so there is such a demand in the spirit for us to begin to go back to God to get the blueprint from God. Amen? Amen. Let's go back to God and ask God, God, how is it? How is it that I ought to live? And that is what Jesus said. We have to get constantly into the place of saying, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Not my desires, but yours be done. Not my ambitions, but yours be done. Lord, I am willing to come to the place of surrendering everything that I know how, that I may get what you had ordained for me. Now that is not an easy thing to do. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Or is it? Mm -hmm. Is it an easy thing to do? Mm -hmm. I have struggled for a long time. I have struggled for a long time with surrendering fully to God. Amen. Mm -hmm. I like making confessions because that is that is how I become accountable to you as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. You may think I am making it as a believer. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I have struggled in one area. And that is the full total surrender to God. Praise be to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the mindset that I have had is that, Lord, if I give you everything, me now I put that in your hands, and I see you making me become a poor person. Have you ever thought about that? You know, mm -hmm. God doesn't want us to be rich. God just wants mm -hmm. us to be poor. God just wants us to be stepped on by everybody. And that has been my struggle for a long time. Yesterday when I was flying back, when we had the cash on Friday in Nairobi, it was it was a different kind of cash. We repented for four cash of things and struggles that we've been having in our lives. I was pleading with God to have mercy upon me for being a selfish, self-centered person. Amen. Wanting my own desires, wanting my own prosperity, wanting my will. And I was crying to God and saying, God, have mercy upon me. Deliver me from my will. Deliver me from my own thoughts. I want yours. That was the whole question. Have you ever been in a place, you know some of you have never preached, or you have never stood before people to, sh to, to share something. If you ever were asked to do a speech and you were clueless, then you would understand the way the butterflies in Nigeria are coming. Yani, you know, you're, you're, you're being told you are the guest of honor or, or you know, you've gone to this place and then they come and whisper, you're the one who's going to speak. And you're so empty. That is how I was on Friday when I went to Nairobi. I was empty. I said, Lord, I don't even want to preach. I don't, I don't. I just want you. I want to get a hold of you. Lord, I need to get a hold of you. That was the whole question. So as I'm traveling back, I get, uh, you know, I, I hardly use these fear things. I always find guys crazy in these things. But I was crazy like them this, this last weekend. Amen. I found myself using them a lot and listening to my music as I give my heart to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I have reached a place where I have said, Siju Umajua. I am surrendering my life. I am giving up my will to you tonight. That happened last night. I said, Lord, no, I will struggle until when? Until when will I struggle? And the Lord was showing me some things, and that is what I'd like to share with us today. Amen? Mm -hmm. It may not touch your life, but it's my destiny. Amen. Amen. If it blesses your life, then it's okay as well. And so I, I reached a place where I said, Lord, the reason why I'm having this tug of war is because I have been holding on to my will like it is mine. But today, Lord, I, I am surrendering my will. Amen. Amen. I was in another place. My wife was asking me yesterday, what's wrong with you? What happened to you? Have I done anything wrong? 
I was in that place of body where I was saying, Lord, if we love you, I am giving it to you. And the Lord said, evidence. So I picked my journal and I wrote the prayer in my journal. I said, Lord, tonight, the 15th of, of August, 2015, I will fully surrender my way to you. That you will take over. I don't know what the cost will be, but whatever cost it will be, I am willing to take the price. Lord, if it you do anything and everything in my life to make me do your will and not mine. Those were my those were my words and I wrote it down. Praise be to Jesus. The weight was quite something as I was writing down and I'm telling God, God, I am tired of doing my things my way. You said you would take care of me. Why am I taking care of you? Don't you know, by the way, if you look into your life, you will realize that we actually take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. God is nowhere to take care of us. Really, the only reason you surrender is because you had nowhere. True? You had nowhere. And then you surrender and God surprises you. But he does it once and then tomorrow we are back. Holding on to our mind, holding on to the way we want to do things. Mm -hmm. You know, until we get again to the end of the rope and then we say, okay, God, 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 God. And God being God, He's so faithful that every time we give up our will, He comes through for us. But He's calling us to live that life daily, daily, a life of total surrender to His will and His will alone. Praise be to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And I realize that the reason why we are struggling believers is because we are holding on to our will. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. on, on Friday, the Lord was rebuking pastors and the sheep together. You go and read Ezekiel 34. Amen? Mm -hmm. Salim, you are the priest of your house. Go and read that for yourself and then you share it with your family. <laughs> if, he, if he doesn't come home, you come and talk to me. I will come with you for house fellowship. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 34. You all go and read it. Amen. Amen. The Lord was talking about shepherds and their crooked ways. The Lord was talking about flock who step on other flock to make it. Amen. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. And I find that we are so, so strong on our will, our desire. Hallelujah. Amen. Today's preaching is about being blessed. Amen. Amen. It's about me becoming somebody. That's why I started with that, because we all want to be somebody. And I'm going to teach us the Christian way of being somebody. So that we may embrace this way of the, of, 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 of the kingdom of God and not our own way. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. I want us to see some things, because if, we, if the Lord helps us in this way, then our life is going to be a different life. And a life that is going to be for God. Amen. Amen. Are you in John chapter 12? Yes. I'd like somebody to read for us. John chapter 12. From verse number 23. The gospel of John chapter 12 from verse 23. The hour has come for what? For the Son of Man to be? You could say this the hour has come for Jesus to be blessed and for Jesus to be successful. Hallelujah. The hour has come for Jesus to be glorified and be blessed. Hallelujah. We all want to be blessed, true or not true. So now listen to what is about to what is about to come through. The hour for Jesus' glorification was at hand. Let's go on. I tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, mm -hmm. it remains only a single seed. Mm -hmm. But if if it, it dies, mm -hmm. it produces many seeds. Leave it right there. Praise be to Jesus. Mm -hmm. We are talking about glorification. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are talking about success. 
we are talking about being somebody. And Jesus, knowing that it was his hour to be glorified, says these things to them. Verily, verily, he says this is of, of importance. You know when verily, verily is used, then it means it is of great importance. And what is he saying to us? Except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. Hallelujah. We are talking about Hallelujah. We are talking about being somebody. This is the judge of being somebody in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You will never be somebody. You will never be glorified until you get to the first step of dying. Except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies. Not just to the ground, but it has to die. It remains a single seed. Hallelujah. Except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. And this is the issue. The seed in itself has got life. But that life must be willing to give up to get another life. Hallelujah. The seed has something in it that has a potential for bringing forth life. Amen. That seed has something like that. But until that seed falls to the ground and dies, it can never show forth a glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It can never come and be something that is going to change any, 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 and transform any other person. Amen? Amen. Those of you who harvest maize or you harvest beans, if you put it in a sack, that is all it will be, right? Beans in a sack or maize in a sack. That's all. Amen? It can never do anything else. It will just be maize or beans in a sack. Hallelujah. But if you want that maze of beats to be meaningful, then something has got to happen. You've got to remove it from the sack and put it in the ground until it dies. Then you will have other sacks of maize. Other sacks of beans. As long as you leave it in the sack, I am sorry. That is the end of it. It will never end anything. Anyway. Hallelujah. And every time we hold on to our will, I can assure you that your life will never impact anybody else's life. As long as we are self-centered, forget about blessing and being a blessing to someone. Amen. Until we die to our own desires. Praise be to Jesus. When you're sitting in your house and a thought comes to go and visit somebody, is it for free? Will it not cost you? It will cost you money because you're going to use transport. It will cost you time. You have to be willing to die to your own time to be a blessing to somebody else. If you, if you don't, then you will remain in your house. Hallelujah. How many have ever been in a place now the whole day and nobody even SMS you? And you say, hey, people nowadays are not SMSing. Hey, I've not even received a call. The reason why you haven't is because you haven't reached out. You try and send three SMSs and see how many you will get in return. But because you are not willing to die, then you will stay on your side. When you stay on your side, you will complain. You try and reach out. When you reach out, they will call you back. They will get back to you. Praise be to God. We have to be willing to surrender our will to make an impact in somebody else's life. Praise be to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this is what the Lord is, has been putting and impressing upon my heart. That that seed must die for another life to come forth. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Our will must be, we must be willing to let our will die for another will to arise mm -hmm. and bring change like change needs to happen. The only reason why Jesus succeeded is because he wasn't doing his will. Mm. Amen? Mm. He had died to his will. He had died to his desires. He had died to every ambition that he ever had. Just to please his father. Mm. 
And because it was his father's will, the father's will would always prosper because he is the one who holds all things together. Mm. Praise be to Jesus. Mm. So he says to us, if you want to be glorified, we must be willing to die. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Verse number 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it. Mm -hmm. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Live it right there. I understood this scripture for the first time last week. And the Lord was saying, He that wants to save his life mm -hmm. will do what? Mm -hmm. Will do it. Now, if you look at the Christian realm today, we are actually in the season of saving our lives. Mm. We want to be somebody. We are building our castles, we are building our homes, we are building, we are, we are getting things. We are trying to make face. You know, saving your life, ni kukwamtu. Amen? And is it wrong to do all those things? By all means, it is not if your heart is in the right place. But if, if you look at all of us, many of us, majority of us, we are trying to save our life. We are trying to be somebody. How that is stress. So, you know, you're not bothered about people's lives. By the way, if you started opening up your heart, you will realize how much money you will not have for yourself. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we don't bother with people's lives so that the money can be mine. I will not welcome you into my house so that the, 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 the sausages and, and the good food in the house are all because if I welcome you, the food will get finished, we'll go back to Skuma and Ugali. But, but so, so we are trying to save ourselves. And you're trying to keep up everybody around your life just so that you can remain. And the Lord was opening it up to me and saying that if we are so self-centered, and if we are going to save our life, we will actually lose it. Hallelujah. The more we hold on to our life, the the closer to death we are dying. Not now, this other death, the death for me. We are actually losing our life. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But if you will lose your life, meaning if we will give ourselves for the sake of God, then we will find our life. Then we will save our life. Then our life will have a meaning. Praise be to Jesus. Mm -hmm. If only we are willing to surrender our life to Him, we will save it. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't want to be used by God because God is just, God just bless me and leave me alone. Saving your life. We will lose it if we save our life. I know this teaching is hard. Probably some of it is passing over your head, but it's okay. You will get it with time. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm sorry I don't have the bless me message. This is the big one. Amen? Amen. Who among us is going to challenge God and say, God, if you have said it, let me see it come to pass. You know, there are so many things in this Bible that we are not experiencing simply because we are not chosen to die. We are not experiencing it because it's going to cost us something. One extra to you. It is going to cost us something to gain this life that we are talking about. Hallelujah. He says, he who loves his life, if we love our life, we will lose it. And make the church today, oh, I am so sorry. No, I'm not sorry. It's where the church is today. We love our lives. True or not true? True or not true? You go and read Ezekiel 34. You will see how pastors love themselves. We love ourselves. We will make sure the church is full so that you can get your time and take our children to private school, and drive big cars, and have a good life. That's all we look for. Amen? Amen. So we are trying to, we, because we love our lives, we are trying to hold on to things and make sure that everything is working for us. Yeah. Or every other person goes to the club. I will make sure that even my kids go to the club. So I will make sure you members, you you know, and, 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 and I am so saddened because we use, we use your tights to gauge everywhere. everywhere where you are at. Amen? Because you know your debt is 10%, so I know how much you are earning, you know. So we play those games as men of God. It is so sad. 
So I will tell you, give me 50,000 because I know you, you are more than that. And I will give scripture. And that scripture will, will, will manipulate your life until you remove that money. And you're struggling in other areas of your life. That is the people who love their lives. And many of us love our lives that way. We just want to see how I can get a little from so and so, get a little from so and so, and just make it. When the Lord is saying, who is it that is willing to give up what they have? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Give up what they have. I was reading about a man called uh, Lord, Lord Rad Radstock. He, he was an English, he was an English Lord in those days. He says when he got God, he gave up everything in the palace to the poor, including his child. He just looked for opportunity to give, to give, to give. And after he finished giving, the Lord said, you have done well. Now I'm sending you to India. Praise be to Jesus. Men who have given up their will to the will of God. When he went there, God used him greatly. God opened up nations for him. You know, opened up nations, Germany, France, just so that he can take to the elite the word of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Who is willing not to love their life for the sake of the gospel? Are you seeing any believers today living like the disciples? Are we living that life? We love ourselves too much. The gospel got to us because some people did not love themselves. But we today, our, the next generation, cannot even love our God because they don't know our God. That was the message you were getting last Sunday. Your child will not even pray because they don't see you pray. Praise be to Jesus. They don't see you pray. We love to sleep and eat. That's all they know and to take them out. Who is going to lock up one day and your child comes and opens the door, finds mommy praying, and say, hey, that's mommy's house, and leaves you there. The next time they will get in there and pray with you, or they will say, eh, hey, please guys, it's going to take another three hours before you can talk to them. Because they know the value of your closet moments. That is somebody who is giving up their life. Hallelujah. What is the content of your prayer time? Is it about yourself? Because if it is, then you're still loving yourself and you will lose your life. Is the content of your prayer time intercession? Are you praying for others? Are you trying to see that the other person's life is better? Or are you just looking onto your own? And you will find 90% of our content, prayer content, is about me. Very Kidogo is about the rest. You will just mention, God, oh, remember, 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 remember. Yes. But yours, you will go into every detail. But other people, you will just be remembering. And you say you prayed for them. You didn't pray for them. You remembered them before God. Pray to Jesus. Amen. Who is going to do that? Oh, I'm going through a love patch in my marriage, and I'm taking three days fast. Are you going to fast with me? We don't want to do that. Shida mia? Mia. Mimi nikosa, nikosawa. So I will not fast. Why should I pass with you anyway? We love ourselves that way. We do not labor with somebody else and see that their, 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 their story succeeds, their story changes. What are we doing in the hour of prayer? Are we just crying out for self or are we looking out to God for change? For other lives. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. John 3, 16 says what? For God so loved the world, for God so loved the world, that he, that he, that he, whoever loves himself must give. And if you give, you will save yourself. But if you don't give, you will lose yourself. God loved himself. God loved himself. And he loved the world so much that he could not hold the thing that was precious to him. He released. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. This life is precious to us. So when I'm saying death, I am not saying that your life is useless. It's actually very useful. And that is why God wants you to, to die. Hallelujah. 
Jesus came from God. And because God loved, he gave. So many of us in the church of Jesus today, we do not love. Don't lie to me. Because we do not give. Amen? Amen. And giving, I, I forget. Please don't even start thinking money. I am not talking money. Money is the least of our givings. Amen? Amen? We don't give. We don't give a listening ear. We don't give a caring heart. We don't give of our time. We don't. We don't. We just love ourselves too much to give. Jesus loved his father and obeyed him to the point of coming. Amen? Amen. God loved us so much that he was willing to give up Jesus for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. He said, if I keep Jesus to myself, we will continue having fellowship with the three of us. Amen. God the Father, Son, Amen. and the Holy Ghost. True or not true? Amen. That is what would have remained. It would have remained God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost having fellowship. But because he loved us so much, he gave up Jesus so that by giving up Jesus, the next time Jesus is coming, he's not coming back alone. He's bringing in more people so that there is sweet fellowship in heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He loved himself to give up Jesus from his bosom. What are you giving up? What are you giving up? Do we love God enough to give up something? He's already told us what we need to give up. Praise be to Jesus. That is why he said that it is harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to pass through the Nile of an eagle. Hallelujah. Because those are the things that hold on to our lives so much. Praise be to Jesus. God loved that he released. He died by giving Jesus. He died. Jesus loved so much that he literally also died. Praise be to Jesus. Mm -hmm. what are we, where are we living? How are we living our lives? Are we living our lives for our own pleasure? Or are we living our lives to glorify God? Praise be to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Praise be to Jesus. Mm -hmm. God loved and he gave. That was the first place of death. So don't tell us that God didn't die. He died. Mm -hmm. By giving up Jesus, he died. He died. And so he gains back. He gains back. And what the Lord was showing me, even as I read this scripture and as he's opening it up to me, he was saying that the minute I give up my will, he is going to come through me in great wisdom. He's going to come through me in great power. He's going to come through me in great love. If only I am ready. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I have not loved the way I need to love. Because only Jesus can love like that. Mm -hmm. But who is going to allow your love to die so that you may receive the love of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. We cannot care like Jesus cares. Mm -hmm. Forget it. Only Jesus has the heart of a shepherd. Only Jesus. Amen. Amen. So if we are going to care, then we have to give up all we know how. Have you ever helped people until you, you got tired? Anybody ever been there? Have you ever helped people until you got tired? Mm -hmm. The reason why we got tired is because it was us doing it. It wasn't Jesus. It was us. So we got tired. And then you start snapping, you start getting angry with guys and, and things are not happening, not nice, you know, and you start putting machati. I even helped you, and, and, and you have never done this, you have never done this. You remember the other time? So it was yours. It wasn't the love that flows from Jesus. Because the love that flows from Jesus is a ceaseless love. It is a ceaseless care. It flows continuously. Hallelujah. We struggle because we are still alive. We haven't died to allow Jesus to love through us. To allow Jesus to reach out through us, to allow Jesus to embrace through us. Hallelujah. Is it easy loving an enemy? Mm -hmm. It's not easy. When Jesus says you love them and you pray for them, he's the only one who can do it. Mm -hmm. You can't. 
And so for you to do that, then you have got to give room for Jesus to rise within us to do that. Hallelujah. You will start the journey struggling, you know, you know, but you will get tired along the way. Praise be to Jesus. But if we will open up our heart and say, Jesus, feel me, love through me, reach out through me, be a blessing through me. Lord, let me die so that you may arise and do what only you can do. Actually, I am looking and longing for Jesus to actually take full control of my life. That is, that is, that is my pursuit right now. For Jesus to actually take full control of my life. I want to be able to say like Paul, it is no longer I who live, but Jesus lives in me. Do you know it wasn't just a saying? It was literal. Jesus was living in Paul. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. It wasn't Paul living. Paul had already died. The person who was doing all those things was Jesus. So he would be shipwrecked, he would come out because it's not Paul, it is Jesus. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. They would do bad things to Paul, but he would still rise back mm-hmm. and love the same people because it wasn't Paul, it was Jesus living on the inside. Mm-hmm. It is, I no longer live. My will, I gave it long time ago. Mm-hmm. So even through the tribulation, he's able to receive it because it is not him living, it is Jesus living it. Mm-hmm. Jesus is the only one that has the overcoming power over trials and temptation. Only Jesus can do that. He gave up his will for Jesus to live in him. Jesus literally did everything. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And where did Paul learn this? Let's just start somewhere. We're going to go back to this. Just flip one page to John 14 because I want us to see something there. I want us to see something there. Amen. Are you in John chapter 14? I want somebody to read from verse number 4. Come to the place where I am going, you know the way. Thomas, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know? The way. So he's telling them, where I'm going, you know, even you know the way. He says, no, I don't know the way, okay? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. Mm. No one comes to the Father except by through me. I am the what? The, the way. way, the truth, and the life. My friends, I am looking for God to actually be the way mm. of my life. I am looking for Jesus to be the truth inside me. I am looking for Jesus to be the very life that I live. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. These are hard teachings, but this is the only thing that is going to help us if we're going to make a difference in heaven and here on earth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Go on. If you had known me, had learned to recognize me, mm-hmm. you will also have known my father. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Listen, no. listen, did you hear what he said? If you would have recognized him, you would have known who? Mm-hmm. The father. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. As in, if you looked at Jesus keenly, it wasn't Jesus at work, it was the father at work. Hallelujah. That is where it started. Jesus, not doing his will, but the will of the Father. If you would have seen me and looked closely, you would have realized the things that I am talking and things I'm doing, it's not me doing them. It's the Father doing it. Go on a little. Please say to him, Lord, show us the Father. Show us the Father and it will be enough for us. Mm-hmm. Cause us to see the Father. Mm. Is that is all we ask. That is all we ask. Mm-hmm. Then we shall be satisfied. Mm-hmm. Jesus replied, Have I been with all of you for so long mm-hmm. at times? And do you not recognize and know me yet? Philip asked, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say then, Show us the Father? We need to write that. 
pray for you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus stopped you. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The, uh, another place in the Bible, the Bible says that Jesus is the express image of God. Amen. That any time that you look at God, eh, no, any time you look at Jesus, you actually see God. Will anybody look at you and see Jesus? Or they will see a lot of you. Praise be to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Many of us who stand in the pulpit, I'm talking to us pastors, who stand in the pulpit and preach, what do the sheep see? Do they, do they, do they, do they see Jesus or do they just see us? See. They see me. Why? Because I have to make sure that Sunday I am dressed in a suit that nobody else has ever seen. I wear shoes that, that will make sure that you are looking at my feet and not listening to my sermon. I will put on a ring that is so big that, and, and, and make sure that the focus is on the ring and not me. I will put on bling in my life so much that you will not be listening to me. You will be, li you will be looking at me. And so when people are now looking at us, they are not seeing Jesus. They are actually seeing us. Because there is no glory in our lives. There is no life in our lives. There is no truth in our lives. When people look at Jesus, they saw the Father. What do people see when they look at me? When they look at you? Can they be saying, I see Jesus? The way you speak, that is just Jesus talking. Can they say that with boldness? If they cannot say that, then it means we are still alive. We need to die. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody already beginning to see why we need to die? Mm. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. Because Christ must be seen in my life. And he ain't going to be seen when I am still there. He, can, he is a jealous God. He cannot dwell with my will and his will. Has mm. he kapamoja? Moja lazima ikufe, ingine lazima iinuke. Wana yeso asifiru. Lazima tutufike maali ya kuwachili ya moja. Yo mungu wa aika inuke kundani ya mashetu. Praise be to Jesus. And it is the journey that many believers have not come. We have not gotten to the crossroad where we are actually had, asking hard questions. Hallelujah. Today, that is my challenge. I am just bringing us to the crossroad so that we make a decision. Ni kama ngombe ambao zinapelekwa kwa maji, alafu zinaambia sasa maji ndio hii. Kama mnataka kuangalia, muangalie. Kama mnataka kunywa, kunywa. Uhai kwa hapo. Praise be to Jesus. Uhai kwa hapi? Kwa hiyo maji. If you look at it, please you will just die. But if you go and drink, you will find life. And all I am presenting to us is the way to true Christian living. If we will receive it, then we will live. If we will deny it, then we will die. Because whoever will love his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I am willing to take the risk of surrendering my will to God that I may get something I have got. Amen. Friday, I'm traveling to Nairobi. I have this guy sitting next to me. And after the plane took off, we took to a cruise mode. And I'm like, excuse me. I want to stand. My bank is open. I want to get it. So the man stood the whole trip to Nairobi. In my heart, I'm saying, God, could I not just touch him? Mm -hmm. You, could you, God, not just flow and just touch his back so that he can see? And his mama the whole time. He said, no, it's just the way I haven't died. Because if I had died, God would have probably reached out to this man in an instant. Now listen, this is the second part of death that had, hadn't happened. What if I do and it's not him? So who is still alive? <laughs> who is still alive? <laughs> I am still alive. I'm thinking I'm the one doing it. Are you getting it? So the fear, there was twofold fear. Like once, I ni not So God, I was not going to pray for you. What if I say, I'm going to pray for you, and then you don't get me? You will look at the food. It means I am still alive. Because
was it? Jesus said this, all your calls to do is do. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I have got news for us. If any of us will choose to embrace this path, mm -hmm. then you've got to be willing to be a fool for Jesus. Mm -hmm. That takes boldness. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You remember when 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 the when the wine got finished in Cana of Galilee? You remember? Mm -hmm. And the disciples were told, were they told to take wine? To go and serve wine? Mm -hmm. What were they going to serve? is foolish, my friend. How do you tell me to go to the king and serve him water? I know I, I picked it from the lake and that is what I'm going to serve. It is foolish. Of, for sure I'm going to make a fool of myself. And then they go, they pour. You know, they don't even want to look. Then after that, the, the guests complain. You know the guests complain? They say to Krishna. She said, I say to me, but the complaint was very vast. See, if you're bringing the best one. Now, when you should have brought it in the beginning, now is when you're bringing it. It wasn't actually because it was water, but because somebody was willing to be a fool for Jesus, God changed that foolishness into wisdom. Who among us is willing to do that for Jesus? Because this path is a path which seems like it is not the right way, but it is the right way. For the path of God looks like foolishness to the world, but it is the wisdom of God. Who among us is willing to go that journey? You know, it is a journey that reason will fail. What else has you It is a journey where we cannot use our our oblamat. You were taught that in high school. You cannot use it. Hallelujah. Amen. It is a it is it is a journey that you walk with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit from inside. Amen. Not your mind. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. So the Lord tells you to get a house that you can't even build. Anybody else will tell you you're a fool. But the Lord who has called you has told you to do so. Keep the supply. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. The Lord says, I will take care of you. Just be there. Who is willing to go the way that seems foolish? Because I have, I have come to the, to the awareness that taking on this path will actually make me unpopular. Will actually make me, me make me be ridiculed. It's a check one. Amen. Nani ya kutahari kuchepo sababu ya Yesu. I am just basically bringing us to the water. It's, a, it's your choice whether you want to take the drink or not. But that is a place of death. Are you willing to be laughed at by everybody because you have chosen the way of the world? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I have been greatly challenged lately by the lives of people who gave up so much so that Jesus would, would, would gain in their lives. And, you know, this, this one lady had gone through so much. She loved God with a passion. And she got a child. She only saw this child for six years. The child died. And she went through agony for a long time. And then God remembered her, blessed her with another baby. The baby only lived a month and died. The pain increased in her. But she said, Lord, I will, all the same, I will still love you. The name of the lady is called Prentice. You can go and Google and read her story. After that, the Lord takes the husband. The Lord takes her. was a blessing to people. God used her brokenness to touch the lives of many hurting mothers. 
many hurting people who indeed have greatly to bring healing all over. When the Lord feeds her with joy and spirit, only God can do that. Amen. Mm -hmm. It is a place of literal death. Who is going to walk this way? Who among us is going to bear God and say, Lord, I have tried what I can. It has taken me so far. But I am willing to go this path that is uncommon. Just so that I may find joy. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. So there is a man called John Han. John Han got married at the age of 26. After he got married, their honeymoon was not in Watam. Amen? Their honeymoon was in Fiji. Fiji, during those years in the 18th century, was a country where they were cannibals. They were eating human beings. That is where he takes his wife for honeymoon after they got married. At the age of 26, he goes there. They know they are going to be eaten. But what had just happened just before they got to Fiji is that they had, they had eaten a mzungu. And when they ate the mzungu, they fell sick. Many of them died. So they said, this mzungu nyama is not good enough. You know? <laughs> so by the time they were getting into that country, the cannibals feared eating white meat. White meat, sio, sio chicken and fish. White meat is mzungu meat. Amen. <laughs> Can you imagine now people talking white meat? You think it's, it's human beings they are talking about. But the torture that they would go through was tremendous. And he would labor and cry to God for the nation of Fiji that they would come to the Lord, that they would break and come to the Lord. He, he, he gave himself to prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. Now, the only point that I need you, which is one point to death, is prayer. Amen. You begin to die in prayer. Amen. As you give yourself to prayer, God will show you what must die. Amen. And you begin to give up. You know, this death process it will not just happen. He will begin to tell you, now it's time to give up this. Now it's time to give up this. Now it's time to give up this. And slowly by slowly, he will take off everything that makes us us. So that we may live for him. Amen? Amen. Some of you have read this book by his Howard, The Intercessor. Amen. Some of you have not read it. You go and look for the book. If you don't have it, I have it. But I will not give to anybody who doesn't want to read this one. I don't want you to read, oh, the Mr. My Intercessor. It's not a book that you will jump and say you're dead. It's a book that you start reading and you put it aside because you know what God will be telling you after you read a, a chapter. <laughs> so you will not... I have had, I have given that book to people who have not finished because it was too heavy. They gave it back to me because they were not at a place where they could follow through everything they were reading in that book. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. This is what God is calling us. A place of death. And the Lord was telling me, and he was saying, if you're going to give up your will, our will is going to arise, and I will take care of you. So this morning when you were in prayer, you know, when, when the Lord says, I will take care of you, you almost reach a place where you, you say, okay, God, you said you'll take care of me. Sour. So I'll just leave my life, you will take care of me. You know, Lord, you're taking care of me. You know, it doesn't matter, Lord, you're taking care of me. So today, when we are in worship, the Lord said, for me to take care of you, you must come to me daily. Mm -hmm. Abide with me daily. Mm -hmm. And pray to me daily. Mm -hmm. If you are going to give yourself up like that, I am sorry. I will not take care of you like that. You've got to come to me daily to receive from me. Hallelujah. Okay. You know, it's not like Kibali. Kibali, you know, she will be there and you see she's going to fall, you pick her up, you know. And, and that's not the same way. But there is a truth in it. The Bible says, except we become like little children, the kingdom of God is not like ours. Who don't care? Doesn't care. Their care is in the parent. 
praise be to Jesus. And that is exactly what God is asking us. Are you able to be like a child and give up your cares to Jesus to take care of us? Do we think that Jesus has a, an ability to take care of us? Hallelujah. It is not a rhetorical question. It is a question I'm asking you. Do you think Jesus has the ability to take care of us? We are just saying it. When Rabbi meets the road, we actually think Jesus can take care of us. Hallelujah. When you're praying for money, don't we always have a plan B? God, you know, if you don't come to, I'll just call my uncle. God, I'm giving you until uh, 3 o'clock. If you don't, I'll just call my brother-in-law. Amen. So we are not relying on God to take care of us. We are relying on a human being to take care of us. And this is the difficult part of death that I find most of us fighting and getting to mm. Hallelujah. Mm. I, I just want to wrap up. This is what the Lord has shown me even as we read. He said, the beauty of dying is that the life that is going to come forth is a life that has never been seen. Just like a seed falls to the ground and dies, it brings another life that has never been experienced. Amen? When that seed is falling to the ground and dies, is it relying on itself anymore? No. It is relying on another power to bring it to life. It is the same way. When we give up our will, then we will solely be relying on another power to bring us up. We will be relying on God to lift us up. We will be relying on Jesus to lift us up. That is the place that God is calling every single believer. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The choice is ours. All I have done today by the mercy of God is to bring us to the place of making decisions. It's up to you. I don't want to make any altar call and tell you those who are willing to come forward. Huh? They're not going to be doing it for me. Praise be to Jesus. Now there is a scripture in that same same chapter that you know he goes on he goes on to say that do not be like that soldier or rather like the man who wanted to build a house and did not first sit and see whether the wall that he had is able to take care of the whole building. Lest he start and then midway Praise be to Jesus. Or you become like that soldier who gets into battle and then in the middle of the battle he realizes, hey, we are going to be destroyed. So he begins to say, peace, peace. You know, you, you, the person who is chasing you is so fast, but you didn't think they were fast. So when they're catching up with you, 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 you turn around and say, peace. Now, many of us, the Lord is saying, please, when you're, getting, when you're getting into that battle, don't get into a battle and you haven't counted the cost. And then you come and say, peace. Or will not work. Praise be to Jesus. And that is why I'm not making an altar call open, but I am making an altar call in the, in the door of everyone's heart that this is something we must all ponder. And we must all count the cost and see if it is a cost we are willing to pay. Amen? Mm -hmm. I told you I reached that decision yesterday, but I didn't start yesterday. Amen? Mm -hmm. I've been thinking a lot about it, and praying a lot, and tossing it around for years. Now I've reached that. Amen? Mm -hmm. If we are going to be one or two or three of us who are willing to try God on this one, we will never be Amen. 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 I am I am putting myself before God so that if He shows me mercy, He may use my life to inspire somebody. He may use my life to encourage somebody. That though He slay me, He will stand by me up together. That though He bring me down, He will still lift me up. That though He wound me, He will still heal me. That is the testimony I want the Lord to use my life to reveal. 
Amen. And I am willing for that journey. I have already made that decision. I am asking you, take time and see what do you want to be. You know we are living on borrowed time. We are living on. One of my daughters in Nairobi told us to share with us a testimony of how easily she almost died. Amen. She was telling us how she was boiling the baby and uh, she, 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 has, she, she, she was sharing with us, she says she has a boiling day. You know, those things that can be boiled. That's the day for boiling. She uses Jiko to do that. So by evening, half of her to Malia to Malaysia. So now she was now boiling the day. And then, what happened is, it was getting too dark. She looked at the, at the fire in the, in the Jiko. It was about to die off. As a mystery of Kweta Ijen Akrubi, Done. But it was far and she was on this other side. She tells us at some point it's like something woke up. And when she woke up, when she sat, she was breathless, she was tired, she couldn't do anything. And life was leaving her that very moment. She struggled to go to the toilet. She had a voice tell her, go to the toilet because there is fresh air. She struggled. She says she struggled. And her house is not as big as this. The house is very small. So the distance from the sitting room to the toilet is like from here to where you're sitting. She struggled. sat on the toilet chair and God started bringing me back again. And she was wheezy. And she tells us at that moment she pleaded to God. She said, Lord, if I die now, I know I'm not coming to heaven. And this is a woman who prays. This is a woman who left formal job to pray. But she was telling us in her own way. At that point, she says, if the Lord took, if she died, she doesn't think she would go to heaven. We live our life like we are in charge. Do you know that? Mm-hmm. We live our life like tomorrow we have it. We don't. Who is going to trust God and say, Lord, I cast my life care upon you. Take care of me and I will do your work. Stand up. Childishness has to be put aside and we embrace adulthood. There comes a time that we get into the value of decision and we have choices to make. Praise be to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Moses, after he comes from the mountain and he tries to go wash through an idol, he draws a line and he tells them, those who still want to worship God, stand on this side. Those who want to worship Jehovah, stand in this. And people chose. And those who are on this other side, like Korah, the Bible says the they earth opened itself and swallowed him in his family. Mm-hmm. We are in critical moments in the days we are living in, that we have to make conscious decisions. And I, all I am asking, and, and, and tonight, I, I, and this afternoon I just feel the Holy Spirit is just inviting us to to critically begin to think whether this dying process is what we must go through or we want to live our life. Is do you just want to live your life or do you want God to come to us? So 
because if you're willing, the Lord is going to pour His grace. The Lord is going to pour His power. The Lord is going to pour His ability. Because we cannot bring ourselves up if we die. There is another life that is going to come up, just like it is for a seed. Jesus died and He was buried in the tomb. The life that He resurrected, it wasn't the former life. It was the power of the Holy Spirit that brought Him back to life. Praise be to Jesus. If we are willing to die, the Lord will give us a power that is not of this world to help us to live a life pleasing and acceptable before. I'm going to give us a few minutes just to reflect upon what we have shared. And, and, and if you must make a decision, make it. If you must draw closer, then it's time to just draw closer. Tell the Lord, Lord, I'm willing to draw closer. I don't want to lose sight of what you're sharing. Take me deeper. Open it up more to me so that I will be able to consciously make that decision. I'd just like you to open up your heart right now and just begin to talk to the Lord for a minute. Begin to talk to the Lord for a minute. Just let, 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 let your heart be challenged with that which has been shared.
And Lord, we may dwell with you, not just in the heaven where you dwell, but we may begin to experience heaven here on earth, O oh God. And we may walk in the liberty that is in every saint that has given up their will, O oh God, for the excellency of your own mind and of your own wisdom, O oh God. Father, we struggle in this walk a lot because we have been holding on to our will. Lord, we have not seen and we have not experienced the liberty and the joy of surrendering to you, O God. I will pray that, Lord God, you will bring us all to that place in the name of Jesus. A place where we will willfully, O God, and joyfully surrender our will to you, O God. That you may have your will prospered through our lives, O God. Father, Lord, as you're taking us through this journey of death, O God, I pray that every single one of us shall embrace it, O God. And we will take up this challenge. We will take up this call, O God, and allow you to be God and to be who you say that you are, O God. Father, Lord God, we pray that you may increase even as we decrease, O God. Let everything, O God, that is of our own begin to submit under the authority of your will. Father, Lord God, it is our cry that we will pray and indeed mean what the word of the Lord's prayer says, that, Lord, your, not our will, but yours be done. Let that which is in heaven be done here on earth, in this earth and vessel, O God, in our lives, O God. Let it be done in our lives, even as it is in heaven. This is the cry of our heart. This is the desire of every single one of us. That, Lord, not our will anymore, but your will be done. Father, show us mercy. May your grace be supplied. May strength be given to everyone that is going to make this decision of us. That, Lord God, you will indeed prove yourself faithful in our lives. Father, this is our cry. This is our prayer. The only love she